As we head into the 54th Earth Day, the EU Copernicus program has released its State of the Climate Report for year 2022. 2022 was a tough year for Europe, with record high summer temperatures, with repeating maximum temperatures above 43 Celsius or 110 Fahrenheit, leading to heavy economic losses from failing crops and severe environmental impacts to wildlife, forests, and rivers. The heat waves forced evacuations and over 20,000 heat-related deaths. European rivers were at such low flows that heavy transport on the largest rivers was forced to stop. Surging electricity usage, the shutting down of atomic power plants, the reduction of Russian energy imports, and the post-COVID money printing all combined with the dire global economic consequences of the war in Ukraine to drive European monetary inflation rates to new highs, leading to a cost-of-living crisis we still feel today. Winter snow, falling more often as rain, produced thin snow reserves going into summer. Without a protective bright snow cover, the following record warm summer drove record ice losses from darkened and overheated glaciers across the Alps. I contributed a Greenland heat wave section to the European State of the Climate Report as September temperatures in 2022 for Greenland were off the charts. An analysis of the 2022 September Greenland climate extremes. Central Greenland temperature anomalies were more than 8 Celsius above average. Atmospheric water vapor, atmospheric rivers impacting Greenland one after another. You can see the planetary wave driving storm systems and then the delivery of tropical moisture into Greenland. Hurricane Fiona is down here and is part of the delivery of excess moisture to Greenland. The month of September 2022 temperatures, red areas are above melting. You can see a chain of weather systems, including tropical cyclones, interacting with the northern planetary wave circulation and delivering a month of temperatures that were at melting or near melting for much of the month. The area of surface melting peaked well above the two sigma level. That is, this is 95% confidence of uh, just random change. And look how far this was in early September. The melt area on Greenland reached above one third of the area and a number of heat waves punched above this envelope where we can call this extremes. Hurricane Fiona related heat wave and other heat waves. It was very dynamic with that high pressure system parked off of southeast Greenland delivered a lot of heat to Greenland. This persistent anomaly had an anticyclonic vorticity which enabled the delivery of heat and moisture up West Greenland and also promoted clear sky conditions that helps sunlight absorption drive albedo feedback. The spectacular two and a half kilometer resolution CARA dataset captures some snapshots of extremely high temperatures. This is the zero degree isotherm, so all of the red colors are above melting temperatures. You can see the atmospheric flow, and there's an arrow every eighth CARA grid point, giving you a feel for just how detailed this data set is. That's the 2nd of September, the 10th of September, 15th of September. You have melting all along southeast Greenland, mid-September. This is at a time of year when the melt season is usually drawn to a close. 23rd of September. You can see the air being pushed up the ice sheet along with heat that's driving this zero degree isotherm inland to upper elevations. 26th of September. 
This is related to Hurricane Fiona, but it was also part of just the planetary wave circulation that's driving heat onto the Greenland ice sheet. Our weather stations, I've been computing temperature anomalies. So anything above zero, the red areas, these are temperatures in this case above a 26 year average. And above the line, I've plotted the absolute air temperature for the daily average. So you have daily averages, three, two degrees Celsius throughout most of September at this location, 926 meters, about two and a half thousand feet above sea level on the Western Greenland ice sheet. Slightly higher up the ice sheet at about 3000 feet elevation. Numerous daily cases where the daily average temperature is above the melting point. This is again at a time of year when melt season has normally drawn to a close. And even on a day with the air temperature averaging slightly below melting, it would still probably have melting in the daytime. And at nighttime, it's getting below freezing. Even higher on the ice sheet, we have Again, daily average temperatures above melting. Stars refer to cases above the 95th percentile in this 13 year record. Even higher on the Southern Greenland ice sheet, 25 year record. We have a daily average temperature here above melting. And again, other dates like this, minus 1.5 probably had some melting during that day for a daily temperature anomaly of above 15 Celsius. 15 Celsius warmer than average. Even higher, further south at the southern dome of the ice sheet, you see the September conditions anomalously warm, 10 Celsius above average in a number of days, up to 15 Celsius warmer than average. And it wasn't just southwest Greenland, here's northeast Greenland. The heat wave conditions are also affecting that area with some above 95th percentile cases. Far northwest Greenland, near Tula Air Base. Most of the first half of September had daily average temperatures above melting. So all this melting darkens the surface through snow metamorphosis, the rounding of ice crystals, and that we can record from satellite albedo, the whiteness of the surface. Here's 2022 September falling off the chart here at a time of year again when the surface should be brightening up. It was that much darker because of the melt effect. Here's an example from our Sentinel-3 size data of the 19th of September 2022 minus a cool year 2018. So these blue and purple colors are darker than that 2018 case, just illustrating how high up the ice sheet the darkening effect in the snow covered area and in the bare ice area. Snow grain size is something that we can retrieve from Sentinel-3 optical measurements and these red colors are basically bare ice or water saturated surface. The kind of yellow colors, this whole area is heavily metamorphosed snow, melted snow. This is the albedo anomaly. So the albedo ranges from zero to one. So an albedo anomaly of minus 0.5, it's twice as dark effectively as average for that time of year because there's no snow cover. And it's not until the end of September that snow cover returns and you get an average albedo. NASA posted this image, South Greenland. You can see that that weather station location is right here at the upper limit of the bare ice area. And above that, you've got snow. The snow has been darkened by melting and there are even meltwater features visible in this true color image. So I had a closer look at this for the European State of the Climate Report, compared this Sentinel-2 high resolution, 10 meters per pixel image. And you can see the 21st of September, 2022, you've got the snow line much higher. You've got more melt ponds at a time of year when it should be snowy, like in the other image from 2020. Wet conditions. Since 2020, we've been putting precipitation gauges on our weather stations, and here are actually two of them on each station. 
here at the southern topographic divide of the ice sheet about 8,400 feet above sea level, 2,400 meters rainfall. More than 30 millimeters of rainfall in early September and again associated with the Hurricane Fiona remnant, another almost 10 millimeters of rainfall high on the southern Greenland ice sheet. At Dai 2, also pretty high. This is 8,000 feet above sea level. You've got more than 20 millimeters of rain early September and similarly the Hurricane Fiona related rainfall driving 30 millimeters of rainfall at this location on the ice sheet which doesn't melt at this time of year in a, in a normal climate so this is a clear indicator of climate warming intensification it's a climate extreme rain is a very conspicuous climate indicator according to the high resolution cara data i made these maps and this is the september 2022 rainfall map this is the 2000 meter elevation contour you've got rainfall above 2000 meters we saw that in the field data you've got a lot of rain concentrated along western ice sheet the northwestern coastal area here lots of rain that's like 74 degrees north latitude well into the arctic the difference with the climatology from 1991 to 2020 has the kind of green colors are above average rainfall and in the east it's below average that's because the air was driving really onto West Greenland. The average northward transport is this line, and you see a cross section east west, Baffin Island, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, at just below the Arctic Circle. So, this is terrain elevation. This is the Greenland ice sheet. Um, the monthly average September northward transport of moisture. You've got more than 100 kilos per meter per second on average of moisture driving north along Greenland. This is far above the 95th percentile. Along East Greenland, it's average below average over most of the North Atlantic. So the atmosphere because of that high pressure southeast of Greenland was pushing the air along the west, producing this extreme in northward moisture transport. The Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland operates a hydrometric station in central west Greenland, a place called Gangalusuak, and 2022, well above the average data since 2006, and it's expanding the runoff season into a time that normally runoff is drawing to a close for the year. This average includes the 2022, so you see the effect that this extreme has of bringing up the average river discharge here in Gangsuswak. So in summary, September 2022 was really off the charts for climate. It served as a very useful climate change indicator. Extremes are coming into focus because they are the hallmark of changing climate, which is no longer subtle. In Greenland, September 22, we saw record-setting air temperatures, record-setting atmospheric circulation, a more stationary atmospheric circulation pattern, driving atmospheric rivers, moisture, heat to Greenland, driving record rainfall. Hurricane Fiona was just one of a few cases when hurricanes dissipate west of Greenland, and it was steered there because of this persistent atmospheric circulation anomaly. Dramatic impacts on the surface from heating that darkens the surface contributes to albedo feedback which further amplifies the effect of warming driving melt higher and that drove river discharge higher at a time of year when runoff should be drawing to a close. So on this Earth Day 2023 let's remember climate change is intensifying and we need science-based policy to make a transition to a low carbon future to reduce the loss and damages from an overheating climate.